form to it. X y. Yeah, x y. Okay. What's the x coordinate here? Can you give me one? X one. Okay. So can we use a number like two? The answer is no. Not if not if we're talking about any two points, right? Because as soon as I do this, I say, oh, this is uh, two comma three. As soon as I do that, is that any point? No. That's a specific point. I can't have a specific point here because if I do. It's only going to work for that specific point. Do you, do you mean that? So I've got to have a general point. How we have general points is every, every, every single point you've ever seen has this form. It looks like x, y. True? And this, this point will look like x, y. But we have to have some way to tell the difference between this x, y and that x, y, because right now they look identical, right? And so I think Jacob already said it. Uh, we're going to use a subscript here, just like we have over here, this x1, this y1. We'll say, okay, let's call this the first point. This will be x1, y1. And this will be the second point, x2, y2. Are you guys okay with that notation? Not sure if you are. Yeah? Okay, good. So we've got these two points. Are they general points? Yeah. Because we haven't said any specific values for these things. We just have x1, y1, x2, y2. Notice how the 1s have to go together and the 2s have to go together. It's because it's the first point and that's our second point. Now what we do for our slope is we look for our, what was slope again? What over what? We look for a rise over 1. So we need to somehow figure out the rise and the run to these two points. Okay, let's, let's kind of go over something again. What's the rise? Is the rise option number one or option number two? One. Rise goes from here. So what we're looking at specifically is how much does this line gain in altitude between this point right here and this point. True? Okay. This is going to be our rise. From here to here. Well, let's see if you're good at this. Oh, I hope you are. I hope you're good at this. What I need to know, how high is that? How high is that? It's between one and one. one, one. Between, it's between y1 and y2? This is zero, right? It's a height of zero. If this point, tell me something. I'm going to erase this and just kind of follow along for a second, okay? If this point were 1, 2, let's pretend for a second that that point is 1, 2. You with me? How high would that be? 1, 1. Really? 2. Explain 2. Why 2? Oh, I see. Okay, because we plot points by going x comma y, right? I hope. I hope. Please? Yeah, we plot lots of points in here, right? We plot points by doing x comma y. So our x would be 1 in this case, our y would be 2. True? Okay, if this was 3 comma 5, there's no scale on this, so you have no idea what it is. But if this is 3 comma 5, what would our height be there? Okay, you're all clear. Now it's not one comma two. It's not three comma five. It is x one, y one. What's my height? X one or y one? Y one. Certainly y one. We're on the y axis, folks. This this height is y one. Okay, with that in mind, with that in mind, what is this height up here? Certainly, yeah. It's got to be the y value, right? Because we're working on the y axis. That makes sense. Okay, we've already done the hard part. What's, uh, since this is our rise, this direction has to be our run, right? This is our, our run to the right. What's this over? X1. That's got to be X2. So far, so good? We will understand the notation there and feel right about that. Good. Now, the only thing we have to do now is figure out what's the distance here and what's the distance here. I'll give you a very good example to, or kind of something to illustrate this for you. Let's pretend again 
that this was 10, and this was, oops, not 7, let's say 3. That doesn't look like a 7, looks like a 3 to me. Let's say that's 10, that's 3. Could you tell me how far between these, the, the, uh, how, what's the distance between these numbers? 7. seven. seven. How did you figure that out? Subtract. Yeah, you probably didn't go 3. <laughs> Seven. Uh, you, you don't do that to find a distance. If you did, I'd say, what's the distance between 137 and 42? And you'd go, oh, 40. <laughs> and you'd be there for another three minutes doing that. We don't do distances like that. We do distances by what you did very quickly. You said, oh, there's a 10 here, there's three there. The distance between them must be seven, because I subtract them. True? So this, this rise would be 10 minus three. Now, of course, that's how we, we figure out the rise. You take the big one, minus the small one, that gives you the distance between them. Sure, no problem. Now, it's of course not 10, and it's not 3. It's what? Minus what? One, two, one, two, one, two. That's our rise. 10 minus 3, I'm going to erase that, because we don't actually have 10 minus 3. Um, I was just illustrating that for you. But the, the real rise that we have is whatever the y2 is minus whatever the y1 is, that's going to give me my change in the height or change in y. Now, you if you're, you're following that. Good. Now, let's do the same thing with this distance. I'm not going to do the 3 and the 10 again to kind of have that, that idea. What's the distance between x1 and x2? Can you tell me that? Sure. Whatever this one is minus whatever this one is will give us the distance between them. So let's kind of recap just a little bit so you kind of are with us one more time. What we do to make a formula is you use something called general points. You, you don't have a specific point here. We have any point, x1, y1. We have any other point, x2, y2. Notice how I use the first quadrant, but I could be anywhere on this graph. It really doesn't matter. This isn't even to scale. So I'm, I'm really making up general points. That way this will work with any two points that you give me. <clears throat> to find the rise, because our slope is rise of a run, we're going to take the top y, the, the highest y we can find, minus the, the smallest y we can find. So basically, the second y minus the first y. Just because, in this case, this one was higher. Now, could you have done it the other way? Yeah, it really doesn't matter uh, which order you go, provided you stick with the same point for your, at y2 and for your x2. All right? you, you can't switch that up. The twos have to go together, y's have to go together. So for our rise, we say, okay, we're going to take this y2 minus this y1. That's giving us the height between them. We're going to take this x2 minus this x1, that's given us the length that these guys are running. So we have now our rise, we've got our run in distance using our y2 minus y1 and our x2 minus x1. Here's the neat part. Since slope is rise over run, do we have an expression for the rise? Do we have an expression for the run? Let's substitute that. What's the letter we use for slope, by the way? M. Okay. So I'll use M again. M is rise over run. We already knew that from a long time ago. The rise here is, we already did it. The run, we have that here. And we've just invented the slope formula. Have you seen that formula before? Hey, you probably have. Has anyone ever showed you that, how to, how to do that? Maybe, maybe not, but if you have, then you, this is a repeat, but if you have it, this is how you invent the slope formula. It's really not that hard. You just pick some general points and understand what, what rise and what run is. How many people were able to follow that down? Now, I'm never going to have you actually go through and prove the slope formula for me, okay? You don't have to do that. So if you wrote down, great. What I have to have you do is take any two points, use that formula, and find out the slope between them. So let's go ahead and practice that right now. So let's find the slope between the following two points.
Find the slope between those two points. This is important because if we wanted to write the equation between these two points, we would need the slope. And right now all we're given is two points. It's great, we have at least a point, but we, we need the slope here as well. That's why we, we do that whole process. Let's go, wait a second, Mr. Leonard. That says y2, y1, this says x2, x1. I don't have any of those x2, x1, y2, y1s up here. How do we, we identify those? And the answer is, well, you, you kind of get to pick. It doesn't matter what point you start with, and in some cases, starting with the like, correct point is going to make your slope formula a little bit easier uh, because, it, because of some, some certain numbers and pluses and minuses. Sometimes you can pick a better point, uh, but in general, it, it doesn't matter what you, what you pick. You're going to get the same slope no matter what. You have to be very good at signs, though, adding, subtracting negatives, and dividing negatives. Okay? You've got to be good at that. So up here, when we have this, like I said, you can pick which one you want to start with. Now because it's, I'm just going to go ahead and pick x1 to be, what, what would you pick x1 to be? 3. Well, why 3 and not like 0? Because that would be y, y, 1. Okay, so you have to pick x for x. I mean, you've got to have an x value. So either one of these could be our x1. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to stick over here because, well, I, I like to go in order. That's just the type of person I am. Now, after you pick one x1, everything else has to fall in place. So if this is x1, what's that have to be for sure? Y1. Good. It is a y, and it's got to be the first one because these are grouped together. You can't go x1, y2. That uh, doesn't make sense. You can't go x1, x2. That's certainly not an x component. So we do x1, y1. If this is x1 and this is y1, what's this one? Good and perfect. Now we have enough to substitute into that formula that we just created, and that's going to find the slope for us. So to find the slope, we go, okay, I know we're supposed to do y2 minus y1. In our case, our y2 is what? 4. So we're going to take, instead of y2, we're going to put in 4, because that is my y2. Now, do we add or do we subtract? Subtract. Okay, good. We have to always subtract those things. So we will put a minus. Y2 minus Y1. What's our Y1 in our case, ladies and gentlemen? Zero. So we're going to have 4 minus 0. Don't you have to still with them where those numbers are coming from? That's not magic, right? I mean, we're just taking these numbers, we're putting it in there for our Y2 minus our Y1. Over, oh my gosh, X2 minus X1. What's our X2? Negative. Good, so that has to go here. Notice how you have to stick in, this, in the correct order. If you reverse these ones accidentally, your your slope is going to be changing from this to this, or this to this. You're going to get the opposite slope of what you want. That's not a good thing. Okay, It's going to make your line look completely different. Instead of going upwards, it would be going downwards or vice versa. So if you're starting with this point, you have to start with this point for your y's and your x's. So we do 4 minus 0, and we go back to this point, we do negative 2 minus 3. That's why we write this out. So we have that in our mind, we can see it on the paper, that's how you do your slope. So try that. On your paper, try writing these things out when you're doing your slope. Negative 2, and then we put the minus sign, and what comes next? You're going to get very good at this. And in getting very good at this, you're going to think that you don't need to show all the work and kind of do this in your head. Let me warn you, when you go quickly on slope, that's kind of where the mistakes happen. Okay, So take your time on the slope portion. It's very similar to doing a, um, a simplification problem with those rational expressions and rushing through the factoring. Some of you saw that on your test. When you rush to the factory and you get the wrong factorization, your problem didn't work out so good, does it? Even though you think you might be doing it right, it's going to end poorly for you. Same thing happens with your slope. Okay, take your time on your slope. Make sure you have this part right. 